Well, as you can see, not much really going on with our lions now. Everyone's starting to get quite sleepy. Over the Ambies is starting to groom a bit, though, I suppose. Maybe that will trigger our male to stand up and the two of them will mate for us once again. But for now, she's just grooming herself and making sure that she's in the best possible condition that she can be. Now, of course, she is going to be very hungry by this evening. She's skinny as it is, and so I'm pretty sure she's going to need a good meal at some stage. Uh, the Telemati male looks as though he's had a really good feed on something, so where he came from I'm not quite sure. The other two girls don't really look as though they're as well fed and Ambise looks very skinny in comparison. So I wonder if she's not been the one that's been mating with the Avoca male and that's why she was missing from last week already. Sammy Jane, not here in the Sabi Sands. Um, normally what you find with inbreeding of lions is that it's a generational thing. It's, it requires sort of three to four times mating within the sort of pride for any effects to, to start to be visible. Um, so the odd male that's related mating with a female here and there is, is really not going to do much to the genetics. Now the Inkahuma pride might seem like it's a bit of a kind of inbred situation with the Talamati male that could potentially be linked and like I say could because who knows I mean these lions have distributed and they because they kind of you know cross boundaries and things like that it's very tricky to know exactly who's who and where they come from and we know lions get confused with one another all the time so i say could be related uh, because i don't actually know for sure and the thing is is that at least there's a different kind of theoretically a different male in the mix here as opposed to the ones that have fathered these in kuhumas now the other thing is is that um, there was a pride down in, in the Sabi, in the southern part of the Sabi Sands that was far worse than these Inkahumas. There was the Hilda's Rock pride, and there the mother mated, well, mother and aunt mated with the sons of the one female, um, and they produced offspring, and those offspring then mated again, which was not ideal. So they were a raggedy bunch of males. I, personally probably my least favorite male lion coalition that I've seen and I know many of you will probably gasp that I've said that I didn't like a coalition of males but they were they looked as though they had been inbred they did not look very good at all they kind of had very scraggly manes their faces themselves did not look very good either and they were a little bit kind of they were tiny in comparison to some of the other males that we had seen and how they managed to get a territory I have no idea it didn't last for long but they managed to worm their way in for about a year when the Kruger male down there kind of moved south and got a bit old and, and they then managed to sort of take over. And I was I was very unimpressed with that whole situation because the Kruger male was a beautiful, beautiful male line. Unfortunately, he lost his coalition partner. Um, and then a beautiful male by the name of Solo. So some of you will know Solo. He came out of the Salala Pride, but he was really a pretty individual. Um, and the two of them eventually joined. And had Solo arrived just a little bit earlier, I think the two of them would have kept those three Hilda's Rock males at bay and would have been a really cool coalition to have watched for a while. And like I say, that Solo male, I'll try and find a photo of him at some point. I don't know. I've got one. I don't think I've got it with me, though. I'll try to bring it arrive at some point. But he really was a magnificent individual. Had this beautiful beautiful big kind of square face and beautiful mane and he was unfortunate in that he didn't have any other males to join up with and therefore was never really a hugely successful male in terms of dominating an area he ended up going into into the Kruger with um, that Kruger male and they spent a lot of time between Sklikusa and Pabeni Gate um, or Paul Kruger and Pabeni Gate um, and dominated for, for a fair amount of time but nothing as much as what I was hoping he was going to I really enjoyed that male lion he was one of my absolute favorites when I first started in the sands he was one of the first kind of young males I watched grow out of a pride and start to go on his own and like I say he was absolutely magnificent beautiful beautiful mane as well and a big big lion he had huge sort of paws and, and his body itself was rather large as well so it was a pity that he didn't have any coalition members to kind of form with but as you can see there there is a lot of activity going on with our lines and I think these guys are going to be down for the morning Orbs is calling me go ahead Aubrey so I'm just going to quickly use the radio just to chat to him I think he wants to come here
Yeah, Orbs, the one of Cheetah Cut Line, south of the link that goes to Quarry Pan from the Cheetah Cut Line. You'll find us right next to the road, yeah. So we're between Central and Quarry Pan, essentially, but on the tortured side. So we're just getting Orbs to come and join us and to see whether or not he can find us and I'll try and get him here. I'm pretty sure you'll find us quite easily. We're not far from the road. And so while we get Aubrey this side, let's send you back across to Jamie and see if she's had any other luck with this male leopard.